And I went back to the computer business and uh, started selling computers again for a few more months, made some more money, but then decided that it's time to leave. I have to get something that's better. Why? Because I realized that I didn't really like the business. It wasn't very uh, the, the most honest business in the world. Uh, but the second thing is that I realized that I had a cap. And when you're ambitious and young, you don't want anyone to give you a ceiling. I knew that the only guys that are actually making real money were the owners. And I definitely did not want to be an owner of a store like that. So I left. I ran into an old high school buddy, and he told me, listen, you should go into the car business. I said, okay, fine. Let me go into the car business. So I go meet somebody in a car business, and I uh, have a meeting with the owner. And he said, oh, come in, come in. I, said, I told him, wait a second. Uh, you know, and I'm young. I'm 18 years old. I have a ponytail. I told him, wait, before I spend any time here, do you mind telling me how much does your top guy make? And the guy was taken back. He's like 50, 60 years old. He says, this little kid asking how much does top guy make? He says, oh, maybe like $150,000. Oh, I said, oh, okay, thank you. I'm not interested. He said, what? What do you mean you're not interested? He said, no, I'm already making a little over $100,000, and I'm already there for only a year. If your top guy making, is making one hundred and fifty, that means he's here for at least five years. For me to wait five years for another $50,000 is a waste of my time. Uh, big head, naive, call it what you want, ambitious. So then his friend told me, I think you're crazy, but if you want, you can get into the business I'm in, but you're definitely not going to make the money that you're making now. I said, what do you do? He says, I'm a stockbroker. He says, the guys that work in my office, my bosses make a lot of money. They make real money, but it takes a while. I said, okay, introduce me to them. I always liked business. I heard a little bit about the stock market. I invested a few dollars into it. Why not? I go into this office, like if anybody has ever watched the movie Boiler Room, a bunch of crooks steal money from people, that was the office that I went into. And I saw, I didn't know obviously about all the stealing and the stuff that they were doing, and I went into this office, and I see everybody's young in their mid-twenties, early thirties, there's Ferraris and Porsches and all types of brand new cars in a parking lot, everyone has a brand new suit that costs at least a thousand dollars. I said, okay, I'm making money, but these guys are really doing it. So I asked the guy, what do I do? He says, listen, you make some calls to prospect people. You don't make any actual sales. You have to study for a test. And then you, uh, you start working. I said, okay, how much money do I make? He says, you make $250 a week. You make $1,000 a month, which is pretty much what I was making you know, in a few days. I said, okay, no problem. Can I start tomorrow? He said, yeah, sure. Okay, so I started working. This place was in Staten Island, New York. A month into it, I start noticing that things are a little strange in this office. I'm not making any sales, I'm just learning or uh, asking people if they're interested in hearing from hearing from my firm or getting a package from the firm. But uh, a month into it, we had to start work early. We had to start work at 8 o'clock in the morning on the dot and leave at 8 o'clock at night with, I think, about a half-hour break a day. Long schedule, tough schedule, but you can manage. So one day at 7.58 in the morning, I'm reading the Wall Street Journal because I'm starting to learn about this business. I got into it, and uh, the, uh, my boss gets into the office very angry, and he looks at me in the office. He says, what are you doing? Get on the phone. Now, I have a little bit of self-respect. I don't like when people yell at me. So I told him, okay, relax. It's 7.58. So him with his uh, Italian hothead, he said, relax, you relax, get out of here, you're fired, you're ho go home. I said, are you sure? He was all pumped up and, you know, all gassed up. And I'm talking, are you sure? I'm very calm, and collected, and not understanding why he's so angry at 7.58 in the morning. <laughs> He said, yeah, get out. So I said, okay, fine. I leave. See, the other Satan works in this lecture also. I forgot to turn on the iPad. It's okay. So I, um, I leave the office. Maybe about an hour later, my friend calls me. He says, listen, he said you can come back. I said, I'll never work for him again. I don't work for people that talk to me like that. A few days later, I find another job, another brokerage firm in a city, small firm, 
And uh, the guy there is very ambitious, very hungry, much smaller office, only a few people. This first office had at least 100 people. This place only has maybe three, four. But he's very ambitious, very, uh, you know, bold and very arrogant. And he happened to be a friend of my brother's. So I go and I, work, I start working for him. Within a few months, I start training other people. And on the side, I'm spending as much time as I pop- possibly can learning about this business. I work for him for the next year and a half, two years. After two years, I realize that he's the only one that's actually making money. I'm only making, at best, maybe $1,200 a month. And he's buying Porsches and houses and jewelry for my family and everything in between. It's just unbelievable and I still could barely survive. So after a couple of years of doing this, I decide that it's time for me to leave. We get into a disagreement. I walk away. And I go back into the electronics business for a few more months. And then the firm next door, which was actually a big firm, uh, calls me and says, do you want to come back to the business? One of the guys there offers me a deal. He says, listen, if you come in, I'll be your partner. We'll split. Well, you won't be a trainee. You'll actually be a real broker. And you won't work for me. You'll actually be a partner. I said, okay, that sounds good. Before that, I want to get my own licenses and so on. So I take my licenses. I pass the tests. And I start working somewhere around July of 2001. A couple of months before a very interesting event happened in the world. July or June of 2001, something like that. So anyway, I start working and within a few days I realized that my so-called partner is a very lazy person. I'm showing up to the office at 7 o'clock in the morning. He shows up somewhere around 10.30, 11. He leaves at 3.30 or 4. I leave at 8 or 9. A little bit of a different schedule. After a month of working, our deal was that he was supposed to pay me $2,200 a month just as a draw until I actually start making money from commissions from all these clients that I'm bringing in. After a month passes, I tell him, okay, I need my money. And he tells me, no, no, I hold the first check in case you screw me. What a nice guy. So, the owner of the branch doesn't say anything. The rest of the people in the office who know this guy is not exactly the most honest person on earth don't say anything. They're politically correct. So another month passes. I said, okay, now you owe me $4,400. I've brought in 25 accounts, which is a lot, considering pay me my money. And he gives me a check for $81.12. A personal check, nonetheless. So I said, what's this? Lunch money? <laughs> and he says to me, no, this is, this is what we earned from the commissions. I'm like, this is not what we earned from the commission, just from the accounts that I brought in. We earned a few thousand dollars. He goes, no, but I had this expense and that expense and this expense and that expense. But it has nothing to do with our deal. He goes, what deal? I said, the deal that you told me to get me in here, where you told me to, that you're going to pay me $2,200 just to walk in as a draw and I'll pay you back. Because we have a contract? I said, what contract? No, you told me you're going to give it to me. What do you mean contract? Because I don't remember telling you anything like that. As you learn from the rest of the story, money makes people do strange things. If you ever want to get to know someone, put a lot of money in front of them. And they'll, they'll mutate into what they really are. When someone doesn't have money, they're usually nice. Unless they're very bitter. But when someone has a lot of money, suddenly gets rich quick, usually they become a little bit of a different person than the person they were when they didn't have money. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.